All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today and being patient with us while we got everything set up and ready for you. My name is Katie Earl, and I'm the coordinator of our University Express program, and I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. And we're joined here today with Dr. Phil Stevens. Thanks for being here, Phil. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. And so, while Phil's going through his presentation today, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in your Q&A panel. And we have some new folks, so I'll quickly go through how to access that. If you're on a computer, look at the lower right-hand side of your screen. You'll see a box with a question mark. Click on that and then send your questions to me. If you're on a tablet or smartphone, touch your screen. That should bring up your control panel. You'll see a circle with three dots. Click on that and there you'll find your Q&A. So we hope you send all of your questions and comments right to me and we'll try to get to as many as we can at the end of his presentation. So Phil Stevens retired in 2019 after 48 years in the anthropology department at the University of Buffalo. He received his BA in English from Yale, then went to Nigeria with the Peace Corps to teach English and to work with the Nigerian government's Department of Antiquities. Those experiences brought him into anthropology and he entered the graduate program at Northwestern. He conducted dissertation research in different areas of Nigeria and then received his PhD. He has conducted subsequent anthropological research in West Africa and the Caribbean. He's the author of many publications in cultural anthropology and African studies, and he is the recipient of two awards for excellence in teaching. And he's here with us today. Phil, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katie. Um, is this up now? I, I just went back down and brought it back up again. Are you You're perfect. <laughs> How's the level of my voice? Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for joining us uh, today. I had some uh, greetings. Happy solstice. Uh, 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 happy Juneteenth. That was a great celebration. And um, special thanks to Katie. Uh, what she's done for us during the pandemic, I think is terrific. True. Um, presentations a day, five days a week, every single weekday since uh, the shutdown. Uh, it's it's remarkable. And she is, um, knows everybody. She has developed a personal relationship with each presenter and has an in, introductory remarks for each of them. It's, it's terrific. Thank you, uh, Katie. So, cults, uh, one of my uh, areas of interest in, in anthropology was religion and uh, the topic of cults, sects, new religions, other labels for these uh, um, emerging religious groups uh, was a popular topic back in the 70s through the, the 90s and it featured strongly in the courses I taught uh, at UB. Um, but since then, it has seemed to me uh, the topic has died out and hasn't been very popular. Uh, e events of the past year have brought it back again. Uh, this is a statement from a, an online journal that I subscribe to. It's free if you want it. Religion Watch, you can go to the Baylor Institute for Studies in Religion and sign up yourself. Uh, I don't expect you to read this or everything I put on the screen, but this is uh, a comment on the very same topic just last month. Cults are in style again, and it gives the recent history for why, uh, focusing, of course, on QAnon, which we will come back to. Uh, two of the, of the nations and the world's major newspapers have also uh, echoed that uh, sentiment. Um, in February, uh, uh, the Los Angeles Times has this opinion piece about QAnon as a cult. And uh, two months later and um, three months later, uh, last month, uh, uh, Michelle Goldberg's uh, uh, op-ed in the New York Times about Mother Teresa, you might have seen that one. Um, the uh, recovery program run by St. Jude, which is strongly anti-Alcoholics uh, Anonymous, has labeled AA as 
uh, a cult. Uh, and the, the, the another uh, area in which the topic has emerged uh, again. Um, it is a semantically loaded word. Uh, my title gives some of the other labels that can be interchanged with the word cult. Uh, cults became popular in America. Indeed, the subject of, of much anxiety um, in the, the 1970s and 1980s. Um, this book was published by two important uh, researchers in the sociology of religion, David Bromley and Anson Shoup. Uh, it was published in 1981. I consider it uh, the best, uh, even way back then, the best book on on uh, uh, cults. And on the cover uh, are, are three, uh, four actually, of the most important uh, religious movements of the 1970s that were called cults. Sung Myung Moon, uh, the founder of the Unification Church, is in the, the center. You might recognize Jim Jones, who's People's Temple met a terribly tragic end in 1978. On the right, Swami Prabhubada, the founder of ISKCON, the International Society for Christian uh, for Krishna Consciousness, uh, popularly called the Hare Krishnas, um, on the left, and um, Krishna up at the top and Jesus uh, at the bottom. Uh, um, the evangelical uh, Jesus people were also regarded as uh, cults. Um, the, uh, the rise of Satanism in the 1970s and 80s contributed to a negative uh, view of the wor word. This man, uh, Anton LaVey, um, started it all with the publication of his book, The Satanic Rituals, in 1959, but it didn't catch on for a while. Uh, he was the founder of the Church of Satan uh, in San Francisco, which really has nothing to do with Satan at all. It's a uh, uh, it's a group of uh, of hedonists. Um, you can look him up. I should tell you, by the way, um, I'm going to cover an awful lot of names and a lot of material. Uh, every single uh, group that I mention is uh, well described online. You can make notes as I talk and look up later in Wikipedia or any of your favorite sources, uh, the history and um, the content of belief of the various groups. Also in the 70s, giving rise to the um, pejorative meaning of the word cults was Charlie Manson. I'm sure you recognize him immediately and uh, his three young women who, even when they were jailed, uh, continued to be cheerful and and um, um, a certain that they were doing the right thing. Uh, and also in the 70s, the missing children scare, which contributed to the rise of fears of satanic cults in the next decade. Uh, in fact, there were no more missing children in the 1970s than there were in any other decade in modern uh, uh, history, but th that was the that was the scare. And cults, uh, developed quickly a reputation of focusing on children. Uh, Jim Jones was ordained as a um, pastor and a founder of the People's Temple uh, in the, um, the 19, early 1970s in uh, California. Uh, in 1977, he was given the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award by Cecil Williams here on the left in this picture. Uh, Jim Jones was regarded as a noble uh, Christian doing exactly the right thing for poor people, for uh, segregation, uh, for um, uh, harmony between the races. He was extremely popular uh, and the People's Temple was a highly successful uh, organization. When he moved to Georgetown, Guyana, things began to fall apart, as we know. We'll come back to some more about him, um, but uh, in it just one year later, 1978, uh, seven, uh, seven or 800 people committed suicide collectively, and uh, the horrible pictures of their corpses 
uh, or uh, were featured on the cover of of Time and Newsweek, both with the same title, The Cult of Death. Uh, another organization uh, or uh, movement that gave rise to or contributed to the concept of cults was modern paganism, neo-paganism, most prominently Wicca, W-I-C-C-A, which is a modern witchcraft. Wiccans uh, chose to call themselves witches and their craft their their practice witchcraft. Um, I was convinced then that they were doing a, a, a make, committing a serious mistake because uh, the word witch and witchcraft have a terrible legacy in uh, in Western uh, history, and um, they were charged with being in league with Satan and uh, and causing all kinds of problems, including um, contributing to the disappearance of children. Uh, Wiccans were, were no such thing. They 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 don't believe in Satan. They they uh, um, don't believe indeed that they are capable of of evil. Um, the uh, Druids, the neo Druids, or 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 reformed Druids in the top picture, uh, and a ritual involving them in the bottom picture, were a number another of the neo pagan, the new pagan movements of the 1970s. The Church of All Worlds by their top priests, Tim and Morning Glory Zell, a husband and wife, um, uh, uh, reflected another of these movements. Um, this picture is from um, that classic uh, uh, book, Drawing Down the Moon by, uh, what was her name? Forgot, forgot her name, who died a, a few years ago, a New York Times contributor, Drawing Down the Moon. I'm blanking on her name, sorry. Uh, which uh, Wiccans uh, disconcerted the, some of the communities where they were practicing, uh, especially by their practice of, of dancing nude, uh, sky clad as they called it, uh, to their believing that clothes inhibited the flow of power between people and uh, nature. The Jesus people, you might remember them, or the Jesus children, uh, this is still in the 70s. You see the uh, date on the top of the magazine cover. Um, they were called a cult. And even though Christians are, uh, cheered uh, uh, the spread of Christianity among young people, they feared the hold that the cult seemed to have over them. Um, a popular definition of cult was emerging. Uh, Satanism, which we'll come back to, was the dominant uh, force that gave the word cult a bad name. Uh, and, and by the uh, end of the, that decade into the 1990s, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the AARP, the American Association for Retired People, um, published in their magazine a warning to seniors uh, that the cults were no longer interested in kids. Now they're coming after you. Um, this, the cult fears were, were spreading. Another category of, the, of cult, the meaning of cult could be described as a cult of personality, the cult of the Virgin Mary. You might hear that phrase even today. Uh, that was uh, widespread uh, for centuries indeed. Uh, and the label was narrowed down to uh, of other celebrities in modern times uh, who commanded a, a adoration far beyond their own locality and indeed their own uh, range of, of uh, immediate influence, concluding with this one. This is a 2019 book with a, a similar title. So let's pause for a moment here uh, with some of these variations on the concept, and let's look at the at the meaning. Um, the word cult derives from the same root as the words culture and cultivate. Uh, its primary meaning, its respectable meaning in anthropology and theology um, throughout, I would say, the history of the English language um, is to refer to the central elements of a a religious faith uh, or religious worship, the Catholic cult. The phrase would refer to the um, to the Eucharist, which is in the news again today because the American Council of Bishops, as you know, is reconsidering 
um, whether people should be allowed to have communion if they if they approve of uh, abortion. Um, the the Eucharist, uh, what, what Protestants call communion, is this central cult of Catholicism, and the people who adhere to the faith may be called the cult. Um, another meaning is uh, a medical cult, a uh, a a following that a an aberrant uh, um, healer of some sort, a psychic healer, perhaps uh, a nat naturopath, uh, a homeopath, um, people who uh, espouse uh, alternate, uh, unproven, aberrant uh, healing techniques, and and their followers have been called uh, cults. Um, any religion that the user of the term considers unorthodox, blasphemous, or spurious, false, will be called uh, or may be called a cult. I think my next uh, definition here may be the most popular, a tightly controlled group with an autocratic megalomaniacal leader, usually involving coercion. You've heard the popular term brainwashing. Uh, and personal sacrifice. Members are alleged to have to give up their personal possessions and and maybe swear an oath to of of loyalty to the follower. Uh, maybe sign over, re rewrite their wills to sign over their material possessions to him or it or them, whoever is running the show. We've already talked about the personality cult. Um, and it it may be called just a um, a, a, a synonym for a disapproved uh, um, methodology, in the same way that the uh, Saint Jude people refer to uh, AA. Now, I want to make a note here. There's sometimes a popular confusion between the words cult and occult, and there is no uh, connection. Occult is comes from a totally different. Uh, root, it means hidden and therefore mysterious. So um, there are all of these uh, labels of all of these meanings can be uh, uh, in the word cult, which can be applied to uh, any number of, of religious organizations. And it's very difficult to generalize. Uh, Christianity and Islam both um, started as uh, aberrant, tightly focused religious groups, which display all of the uh, attributes that we would use in the word cult today. It might be useful to distinguish the word from sect, which is generally regarded as a as an offshoot of a major religion. Um, its members following the major tenets of that major religion, but having some uh, variations in interpretation or in ritual uh, or in uh, ultimate aims and, and so on. Um, other meanings often used by scholars instead to try to avoid any um, semantic load uh, are fringe religious groups, new religions, which is an or alternative religions. But keep in mind, the groups I'm going to talk about hereafter have been called cults, uh, not and this it, it's does not uh, my uh, attribution, but uh, the attributions of of history. Um, before we get back into uh, the content, let's look at uh, some methods of classification. As an anthropologist, this was helpful to me when I was teaching about these organizations, which are found all over the world and throughout all stages of history. Um, many uh, cults focus on the end of the world, uh, a new world order, and that phrase itself uh, generated a, a lot of concern in past years, you might recall, from the time of, of, of the second George Bush. Um, if the cult is called millennial or millenarian, uh, it refers to the concept derived out of Christianity from the word for a thousand um, uh, focusing on the coming uh, end of the world or the resurrection of a of a golden age, which might be in the past. Uh, the word messianic refers to a cult which has a messiah type of uh, leader, 
uh, a person who is believed to have a special hotline to the divine, uh, his or her messages are coming directly from God or from the gods, from some supernatural um, uh, source. Chiliastic is another word for the for the same uh, meanings. Um, the word apocalypse, which means really opening or unveiling, uh, comes from the Christian concept. Uh, and that's another word for the same kind of thing, a, a movement that focuses on the end of the world, uh, how to how to make it through the end of the world. Um, uh, if the end of the world is going to uh, involve destruction of all non-believers and save you, saving of us, uh, it may be called a doomsday cult. If it is led by uh, an individual uh, who seems to dominate the whole scene, then it might be called a prophet cult. These are all um, kind of interchangeable terms for those those kinds of, of movements. Anthropologists and historians have identified revitalization movements, which are called cults and have always been called cults. Um, these are organized attempts by oppressed people uh, who uh, have been oppressed by commonly a colonial power or an economic interest, a corporation from, from abroad uh, who are exploiting them, exploiting their land perhaps and their labor, uh, and their situation is getting worse. They may rise to the uh, voice of a prophet who, who hearkens up uh, a, a, a glorious past or a promised future as a way out of the current uh, oppression. And I have listed a number of the more, more the better known of such, the, the ghost dance religion of, of uh, the um, 1890s uh, in, uh, in, the, in South Dakota, um, which culminated in their massacre at Wounded Knee. Uh, the Melanesian cargo cults, which have gone on throughout the 20th century, I don't know of any in the 21st century, but there probably have been. These are organized groups of, of people in Melanesia who see the fruits of their labors going elsewhere, going to the white man, going to the colonialists, going to the corporate exploiters, and they follow a prophet who says this is the way that it, all of these goods called cargo can be diverted to us. Uh, the Mau Mau rebellions was the result of many different uh, revitalization movements in Kenya. The Mau Mau uh, became violent, uh, and but it can't fully be understood without looking at the history of British exploitation in East Africa. And Rastafari, uh, the movement in Jamaica, one of the back to Africa movements was, uh, uh, and this, uh, this le led to uh, the, uh, the, the jaw, the uh, uh, dreadlocks, uh, um, the, the Rasta, Rasta boys um, who are still uh, around, of course. Rastafari uh, was the princely title of the Emperor Haile Selassie of, of, of Ethiopia, who was regarded as the savior, the Messiah, uh, by uh, the oppressed natives of of uh, Jamaica, jumping uh, to another dimension of of beliefs and organized uh, pe groups of people following such beliefs, UFO cults or flying saucer cults, a number of modern cults, including Heaven's Gate, which we're going to talk about shortly, uh, could be categorized under this heading. But also, the word cult is applied to uh, specifically focused um, uh, traditional uh, uh, efforts in uh, in um, in standard uh, tribal or other religions, uh, uh, a group of priests who focus on uh, the getting the attention of and services of the ancestors, uh, who are the major religious uh, figures in uh, in uh, Eastern Asia, for example, and and are very important throughout Africa. Um, the rainmaking cult, uh, I studied a rainmaking group in uh, among the Bachama of Northeastern Nigeria, where I did my dissertation research. Um, and uh, in these marginal savanna areas of Africa, the right amount of rain is absolutely critical. Uh, and there are uh, groups of people whose 
who are really full-time specialists whose job it is to regulate the rain. And during times of, of, of rapid social change, when there's chaos and confusion, a witch hunt, uh, a mass scapegoating movement may develop, uh, and there will be people specially uh, skilled in identifying witches, and they may be called witch finders, and they may engage in specific rituals uh, uh, invoking spirits or, or deities who, who empower them to find witches. They would be called a cult, a witch finding cult. The use of the word really is, is uh, endless. Um, how to explain the existence of these organizations follows the same kinds of questions that scientists ask when they're trying to explain anything. Um, first of all, nothing is monocausal. There is no lineal, direct lineal ca causation. We're talking about systemic causes. We have to look in many different places to find uh, causes for uh, such complex phenomena. Correlations, what else is going on? And functions is another scientific method. What does the group do? What does the cult serve? What do people gain by being members? And we'll talk more about this uh, a little bit later. And this $64 question, why do people join? And the, the, the answer, the easiest answer, the most accurate answer is, is really simple. It's not at all complex. Um, people um, join uh, religious, new religious groups for the same reason that people join bridge clubs. Um, the, the organization offers something appealing to them and the costs of joining are far less than the benefits of, of membership. It really does come down to that. And Anson and Shoup, in their study of people who joined those cults in the 1970s, found the very same uh, answer. Uh, people joined because they found something attractive in it, and they chose to stay because they were enjoying it. And many of them said that the experience with Sung Myung Moon or with um, the uh, Hare Krishnas or, or the Divine Light Mission or others in the 1970s were among the most valuable experiences of their lives. Uh, so social reasons may be far more um, important than the ideological reasons. Um, people may be lonely. They, they may uh, be motivated by their own sociality, their own need for social affect. But many of the members of these groups were fully socially adjusted uh, and they made rational decisions. They were not necessarily outsiders or down in outers. Um, and this reveals a problem with the application of the word cult to any organization. The, uh, the words and the descriptions are most often formulated by outsiders, people looking in from the outside and th what they see, of course, is imperfect. It is incomplete. They form their, their opinions uh, based on what they see rather than going inside the group and, uh, and seeing what it's really like. Um, I went inside uh, a new age group back in about 1982, 83, uh, followed a friend of mine who was a member of a group in Western New York, which met regularly um, and, at each meeting uh, uh, every couple of weeks, uh, at, at the very minimum, they met monthly. Each meeting uh, featured a speaker, a presenter on some bizarre new age topic, um, uh, psychic phenomena, uh, remote viewing, uh, uh, a distant healing, um, past lives, regressions, uh, alien visitations, um, and and so on and so on. And at each of these meetings, uh, the people listened politely. They found it very interesting. The presenters were well organized with with slides and and quotes and so on. But it became clear that the that the presentation, the content of their meetings, was actually less important than the social. Um, they brought potluck suppers. They looked forward to meeting uh, people that they hadn't seen in a while. 
They talked about their children and schools and taxes and the same kinds of things that people talk about everywhere. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that that the major appeal of these kinds of groups is not ideological, uh, but rather uh, social. Uh, I, I don't mean to generalize. We have to look specifically at each group to, to make that kind of a statement. But this is a dimension which uh, uh, Bromley and Shoup wanted us to consider way back in 1981, uh, and I echo it today. We have to keep in mind also that many of the cults that people have feared throughout modern history are imaginary. They do not exist except in people's minds. Uh, the cult of, of, of witches, for example, Margaret Murray, an Egyptologist in 1921, wrote this book. This is a modern a paperback edition of it, The Witch Cult in Western Europe. In fact, there was no witch cult. There was no group of people who practiced uh, even any of the um, mundane, uh, profane things that witches were accused of doing. Um, um, uh, there were, of course, many people who believed firmly that the devil empowered people to be able to fly and change their form and, and uh, uh, kidnap children and fly away to their Sabbaths and so on and so on. Um, but they were not derived out of real groups of women. Uh, it was a, it was a, a, a totally uh, imaginary concept. Margaret Murray's argument based in the, uh, uh, contained in this book lasted for more than a decade uh, and the Encyclopedia Britannica of the 1925 edition featured an article by her on the witch cult in Western Europe. It was, um, I don't know how um, influential that concept was. I know that it influenced the, the resurgence of modern paganism, uh, especially Wicca in the 1930s in England and the 1970s in America. And it formed the basis of a standard set of fears and fantasies, which are uh, found all over the world and they emerge in times of social stress uh, and they form the um, content of beliefs in satanic cults in the 1980s and 1990s in America uh, and indeed all over the world. Uh, there were no cults of diabolical child stealing Satanists. They did not exist, but fears of satanic cults were widespread around the world. We'll come back to, um, no, I'm, I'm gonna get to a, another su a suggestion as to why. A couple of other um, imaginary cults might be found in, uh, uh, in uh, certain uh, dictatorships in, like in, in Haiti, uh, the the Duvaliers, uh, Papa Doc and Baby Doc Duvalier um, uh, cultivated uh, people's beliefs that they had connections with supernaturally empowered uh, cults of of people. So you better toe the line. Uh, don't rebel. Don't dissent uh, for uh, uh, or else. Um, the uh, Bizango and the Zobop, uh, as they're called, you can look them up, uh, are examples. The Tonton Makut were real people. They were thugs. Um, um, the uh, Papa Doc's uh, um, or, uh, or own a gang of thugs who enforced his directives. But the supernatural powers that they were alleged to wield were, of course, imaginary. Um, Donald Trump and others of his time uh, um, stoked fears of the Salvadoran gang MS-13, which started in California and spread across the country, allegedly spread across the country, and was found in, Los, in, in, New, in New York, in the five boroughs, and in Long Island. Um, uh, MS-13 did indeed exist. Uh, it was criminal. Uh, it probably is, I should use the present tense. Uh, and there was some appeal, apparent appeal of Satanism among among its uh, leaders, but but Satanism did not form a basis for the doctrine or the uh, secret oaths uh, of MS-13. But it's very interesting to me as an anthropologist that QAnon, which developed only a year ago, 
it, it contains many of those same uh, elements. And here they are. Um, my first listing of these attributes came from my study of classical witches from the early Middle Ages, uh, 14 uh, attributes which I have concluded uh, represent universal human fears and fantasies. And most of them, not all, but most of them are found in beliefs about modern Satanists and beliefs about QAnon, especially the abduction of children, sexuality, in, um, um, sexual trafficking, and so on. And when you combine uh, the uh, uh, both of these, the abduction of children and sexual molestation, you got a real bad combination. Um, they were not, they are nocturnal, they are socially subversive, um, and they're really, really bad. They engage in cannibalism and they drink the blood and eat the flesh of the body parts of the of their victims. All of that is found in QAnon beliefs today. Let's go to some real cults now in American history. Um, and remember the tremendous variation in the applications of of that uh, term. Uh, American history is filled with uh, new religious movements uh, who respond to a collective, uh, a, a collection of, of, of social uh, factors, social, political, economic uh, uh, factors. Some of them are terrifically um, influential and others are short-lived and kind of dissolve, uh, not very well known. There must have been hundreds of them. I'm gonna give you just a few. The earliest uh, important uh, such movements, or uh, either imaginary or real, in American history, I think, were the uh, alleged witch cults throughout the 17th century. Uh, the first person who was hanged for witchcraft in in uh, Windsor, Connecticut, uh, in 1637. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut, had a whole slew of witch executions in the night in the 16. Uh, 50s, uh, and it all culminated, as we know, in uh, Danvers, Massachusetts, which was then called Salem Village in 1692, um, when uh, 19 uh, people were, were, were hanged and one was oppressed to death, and hundreds were uh, imprisoned and their, their, with their health uh, severely impaired on uh, accusations of being in league with the devil. Of, of joining with other upstanding members of the community, meeting with the devil in uh, secret Sabbath meetings, uh, plotting the undermining of, of Christian society, et cetera, et cetera. A few year, a couple of years later, um, uh, a real organization developed in Philadelphia, uh, and there is a plaque, uh, a memorial to it there today, in the Wissahickon, Wissahickon um, uh, Park, I think, along the Wissahickon Creek, which runs in through the city, Philadelphia, um, established by Johannes Kelpius, who came from uh, Germany, from an area which later became Transylvania in, in Romania, but was then under German control. Uh, and he, like many of, of his followers uh, and uh, throughout the, 19th, the uh, 18th century and 19th century, um, uh, based their, their theology on new readings of the book of Revelation. I submit that the book of Revelation is the most influential book of the entire Bible um, of, from its inception until the present. The Society of the Woman in the Wilderness, an apocalyptic movement uh, preparing its followers for the end. Jumping way ahead to the 1780s, the Shakers, the United Society of Believers in Christ's Second appe Appearing. Um, there's, if you read the New York Times, today's issue in the arts uh, section has a story about Shaker furniture and the Shaker Museum in Chatham, New York. Um, Mother Ann Lee was the best, best known leader of the Shakers, uh, they got their name from the uh, label Shaking Quakers, so named because of the ecstatic dancing that they entered into 
to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, they uh, avoided uh, our sex. Uh, they uh, praised celibacy. Uh, they wanted to propagate their membership by conversion only, and uh, um, uh, they didn't last uh, for very long. The late 18th century was marked, I think, by um, the neo uh, Druids uh, uh, derived from their concept of ancient uh, Druidry, the priesthood of the ancient Celts. And throughout the 19th century, uh, a whole flurry of religious movements uh, constituting what came to be called the Second Great Awakening, um, spear, spearheaded, we might say, by Jonathan Edwards uh, in this very uh, sermon delivered in Northampton, Massachusetts in the uh, in 1740, 1741, sinners in the hands of an angry God. I'm sorry, this is slightly out of focus. Here's a picture of, of, of the Druids, ancient and modern uh, Druids. But um, Edwards uh, influenced a number of, uh, of religious movements that developed and spread mostly in New York State from the Hudson Valley to here, to Western New York, throughout the uh, um, 19th uh, century. We've already mentioned the Shakers. Um, others that, that formed here moved on for want of, of more land. Some of them were quite successful for a time anyway. These names I have here are names of really well-established, well-organized groups which were based in reinterpretations of Christianity, reinterpretations of the end times. Uh, they were utopian, we might say, in which the, uh, the members uh, sought to improve their lives and to achieve a better life through Christian means, but through their own means, a general distrust of society and political organizations. Uh, you might recognize some of them. Uh, I want to save time for questions, and so I'm not going to go into some detail in any of these. Uh, New Harmony established itself in Indiana. They moved westward, and they ended up with seven uh, near nearby villages. Uh, they became self-sufficient with farming and, and some uh, technological ventures, uh, and there are memorials to them today. Uh, their members were called the Harmonists. Uh, the Amana colonies, they started here in West Seneca in Western New York. They too needed more land and they moved to Iowa. They are best known for their heavy appliances, the uh, uh, Amana refrigerators and so on. And they were very successful. They were worth uh, uh, many millions of dollars when they disbanded in the 1940s. They were really long lived. Brook Farm and Fruitlands are two uh, kind of competing um, communities that developed in Massachusetts, agricultural communities. Both of them were influenced by the philosophy of Charles Fourier in, in France, who instituted the, the philosophy of transcendentalism, uh, which they combined with Christianity, especially Christianity that developed out of Unitarianism, um, but they they condensed it even further and made it more humanitarian than even human than even Unitarianism was, uh, uh, arguing that the divine is right here, here and now. We needn't reach outside to find the divine. All of them were. Um, emphasized full egalitarian equality of the sexes, equality of the economic um, compensation for labor and so on and so on and so on. And you might know the Oneida community who are known now be, uh, for their silver, uh, Oneida silver. They were established in 1847 by um, John Humphrey Noyes. And I'm interested in them because John Humphrey Noyes the fourth was a college classmate of mine, of mine, uh, and uh, they also were a utopian uh, community, equality of the of the sexes, and they practiced uh, free love. They believed in uh, not the institution of marriage, but rather collective raising of children, and so on and so on. 
Uh, there are good uh, essays on all of these movements in uh, Wikipedia and others. We know about uh, the Mormons, the, the uh, uh, Church of, La of Latter-day Saints who were established in Palmyra, just down the New York Thruway uh, from, from, from here, the so-called Mormons. Uh, you may or may not know about the Millerites who were another of the really influential uh, groups that developed uh, in, uh, in New York State in the uh, 19th century, established by William Miller, um, who predicted the actual date for the end of the world, uh, which didn't happen, needless to say, and resulted in the great disappointment, as it came to be called. But Miller didn't lose any followers. Um, he quickly uh, recalculated uh, elements in the Bible and and the uh, criteria by which he had set the first date and came up with 1844 uh, as the new date. Well, of course, that didn't happen either. Um, but Millerism was tremendously influential, and it persisted and developed directly into Seventh Day Adventism. And we'll come back to that at, uh, toward the end of my presentation, and I'm sure you know where that's going. William Miller's house is today a tourist uh, attraction. You can visit it up in um, uh, the area between the uh, Hudson River, River, the Upper Hudson River, and the state of Vermont. Um, look him up. Charles Tays Russell, uh, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, was directly influenced by Miller. Uh, these are all uh, uh, products of what was called the second of four great awakenings. The tremendous religious zeal that, that burned across New York State in the 19th century earned it the name of the Burned Over District and uh, the title of a book by uh, Whitney Cross. And notice how the, the uh, areas of the uh, counties that were most influenced by these, these new religions, many of which we would call cults uh, today, um, and these are, this is a, ma a map of some of the specific locations of some of these uh, revivals and um, new religious movements um, with uh, 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 different labels. The anti-slavery churches, it's not well known that uh, Christian abolitionism was a, 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 a tremendous factor uh, in the uh, Christian evangelicalism in the 19th century. Uh, how could the world be perfect? How could we achieve our utopia while people are enslaved? And the label 18, uh, 1831 revivals is the date of the be of approximate beginning of the of the second great awakening leading into uh, Miller and uh, his followers. We all know about the, the Fox sisters who down in Hydesville in Wayne County established the religion of spiritualism which settled uh, here in Western New York in Lilydale, right on the edge of Casadega Lake, um, which is a, a worldwide pilgrimage site for spiritualists. Spiritualism, the religion of spiritualism is one of those new religious movements. Why uh, the burned over district? What was going on? And that's the most important question to ask. All of these factors contributed to the rise of new religious movements in New York State. Uh, 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 the myth of the Mayflower, as it's been called, the, the myth, and a myth is a powerful uh, a truth, right? A great truth, uh, which may or may not be true in practical terms, but it, it, it motivates people. Religious freedom and people flocked to America, uh, bringing their previously persecuted religious beliefs with them. Uh, knowing that they would have freedom here. Um, rapid uh, social change in the form of immigration. Uh, immigration has been the history of American, um, uh, 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 the development of American institutions for the past three centuries, uh, as we know. Um, and the uh, uh, New, York, New York State of the, of the 19th century was really a hub, a focus of immigrant immigration from uh, uh, Ellis Island and, and westward. Um, but westward was the frontier and beyond the frontier was mystery and danger. Uh, and you know, we call ourselves the Niagara frontier here in Western New York. 
And it's not just because we are on the Niagara River, which is the border with Canada. This was indeed a, a, a demarcated line in the Western frontier beyond which was paganism, savagery, disorder, chaos, and we were moving westward into it. Um, and in, I'm not exaggerating. Um, we're, we're concerned again with civil rights today at the, uh, as the pandemic wears down, um, but it's mostly um, uh, black uh, 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 social justice. A lot of people, and I'm among them as well, uh, argue that uh, um, Native Americans, the indigenous peoples whom we uh, were trying to eradicate in our move westward uh, should also receive the same kinds of consideration. They are far fewer in number and they're located mostly on reservations, so they're out of our sight. Um, but they were on the other side of the frontier and they were not happy about our westward uh, excursions. We also need to recognize the influence of European occultism. Uh, um, there was communication, not instant as today, but pretty rapid. Uh, Eliphas Levy was a French uh, uh, occultist who was responsible for that satanic item. So uh, there's drawing called the Baphomet. Look her, look it up. Helena Blavatsky was a, a founder of uh, Theosophy. Um, Jump to Buffalo, uh, the magazine uh, Western New York Heritage, a really great magazine. If you don't know it, have a look. Uh, they did a feature on the Davenport brothers just last just last year. They were spiritualists, mystics. They uh, were escapists. They were magicians uh, and so on. A uh, Fourierism uh, from France, Charles Fourier, who instituted transcendentalism. And toward the end of the century, the infamous Aleister Crowley. Uh, and he had a tremendous influence on uh, American thinking. Um, but also, uh, and this is important in the development of Lilydale, women's rights, women's suffrage, what was going on in Seneca Falls, um, and the Niagara movement, which was focused just across the river in Fort Erie, right? All of these factors contributed to the mass confusion uh, that uh, stimulated um, people's interest in new religious movements. Jumping to the 20th century, uh, I've already talked about the uh, Satanism scares. Um, I feature them in another lecture that I give. In fact, I'm going to give that uh, next month uh, with Katie's uh, help. Uh, we'll talk more about imaginary cults and the conspiratorial um, elements of these feared organizations. The Westboro Baptist Church, who was a who are really a the prototype of hate groups in uh, in America, and you know Nixium, which is the most recent. I urge you to for more information on cults and religious movements, go to uh, this uh, website I have at the bottom of the page if you're interested. And if you email me directly, I can send you uh, any of these uh, slides. Scientology, um, there's a big Scientology church in Buffalo, you might know. You might remember this case with, of Ellie Perkins, who was a Buffalonian. Um, uh, uh, I'm uh, including this because uh, of her local uh, residence. Scientology was labeled a cult and still is by many. Uh, it got into trouble because of the uh, rigidity of its beliefs. Uh, you might remember this case. Um, the Mormons got into trouble for a number of their aberrant uh, groups. We could call them sects, some of them, the Reformed Church of, Le of, of the Latter-day Saints, uh, and another branch of the uh, uh, RLDS led by Jeffrey Lundgren uh, in uh, 1990 who uh, uh, murdered uh, half a dozen people in the process of establishing his own utopia. You might remember these guys who moved up to Lockport. Um, they were entirely peaceful, but they disturbed a lot of people just because of, the, of, the, of their tight knit, their, they spoke a different language, uh, and because of the popular meaning of the word uh, 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 cult. 
Chen Tao, C-H-E-N-T-A-O, which means the true way, I think, or the way of truth. You can look them up. There hasn't been any writings about them since 2014, and I really don't know if they're still up there in, in, uh, in Lockport. And the Seventh-day Adventist started by William Miller, or at least the legacy of William Miller, culminate uh, in the, um, uh, the, the, this uh, horrible uh, events in, uh, uh, near Waco, Texas in 1991-92. Uh, uh, the conflagration that took the lives of of many people under um, the leadership of this man, uh, Vernon Howells, who took the name of two messianic figures, both named as messiahs in the Bible, David and Cyrus the Great of 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 Persia, uh, whose he Hebrew name is Koresh, David Koresh. Um, Heaven's Gate. Now, all of the generalizations I've made so far are not, or none of the generalizations I've made are applicable to this uh, organization. They really defy uh, uh, categorization. They are a UFO cult. They are a suicide cult. Uh, they, all of their members chose to join and chose to stay and chose to follow and believe in the uh, the uh, uh, dictates of Marshall Applewhite uh, in, the, in the center of this picture. And they all willingly uh, ate uh, applesauce laced with cyanide at Easter time in 1990, whenever it was, um, lay down and died. Uh, they were covered with purple cloth. The purple is the Easter sign of royalty. And their souls, they believe, flew out of their mortal shell, this constriction of, of humanity, the flesh which was of the devil, uh, and were liberated and flew up to the comet Hale-Bopp, which was in the heavens visible at the time, and right behind the comet was a, was a spaceship from another dimension that was going to carry the souls to their own uh, paradise. This was their philosophy. These were intelligent, well-educated people. And in order to understand why each one of them joined, we'd have to do a personal interview and a personal inventory of their lives. Those have been done. I'm going to jump over this terrible person, Fred Phelps, who established the Westboro Baptist Church of Topeka, Kansas, uh, who from the 1970s to the present uh, Fred Phelps died a few years ago, but his family continues. They could be called a cult, um, continuing their uh, biblical-based uh, hate, even up to last year. This is the sign outside their church uh, last year, that COVID-19 is the last of God's plagues, or I should say the most recent of God's plagues, delivered to the people because we are tolerant of homosexuality. I think that's my last, oh no, this is the final. Uh, just a few months ago, um, Nixium, um, uh, uh, Keith Renier, uh, who established this model for business success, right, in Albany and uh, recruited a lot of people and a lot of money to join him, he had more than 20 women who agreed to uh, uh, get allow themselves to be branded uh, just both below their waist uh, with the uh, 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 monogram made of his initials. Uh, he is now serving 120 years for variety of charges. And uh, this woman is, I've, I'm not sure if this is Claire Bronfman or, or who, what one of his female associates, five people were convicted. And the word cult is really the only word that was applied to uh, Keith Ranier. I am, am ended and I've gone a few minutes further than I that I wanted to. Um, I, I want to, uh, did I just shut myself out of the picture? No. You did, oh, there you go. I'm trying to uh, get out of full, 
full screen and that's not working. I want to get to questions. Um, why don't you uh, lead us, uh, uh, Katie, in uh, any questions that you might have received? Thank you all for your patience. There's a lot of material here. I hope it's been interesting to you. Um, I'll stop now and, and wait and see what you all have to say. All right, thank you, Phil. Thank you for that presentation. We do have a couple questions here and some you already answered, but let's get let's start with this one. Uh, this person is wondering, do you know of John Day Reuter, Reuter, excuse my pronunciation, out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada? He operates a center called College of Integrative Philosophy. It seems very cult like wondering if my suspicions are justified. I will look him up. Will you spell the spell the last name? It's R U I T is in Tom E is in Elvis R John no, Day Reuter. Reuter. No, I've never heard of it. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of such organizations, but I do not know of that particular one. Thanks for that suggestion. I'll try to. I'll make a note of it and uh, look him up later. Is there another? Question? Yeah, this is a comment. It said, we lived near the Taiwanese and they lived in Lockport. They had white plastic chairs and a circle in the backyard. Okay, that's Chen Tao, right? They started in Garland, Texas. And uh, um, according to an understanding of their motives and their history, which may be a misunderstanding, uh, the uh, leader thought it was Godland, um, but I'm not. I'm a little skeptical of that, and of the reasons that brought them from from Garland, Texas, all the way up to um, uh, Lockport. Um, they their their theology uh, changed over time. Uh, they did believe firmly that God was guiding them to their own promised land and that it was now going to be found on the shores of Lake Ontario. I can't tell you, they, they rented a house in Lockport, which I think they're still in, at least I'm told by some friends that they are, and they were good citizens. Uh, there were no civil complaints uh, about them. All right, thank you, Phil. We have uh, next, this presentation is awesome, thank you. <laughs> Uh, we have awesome is a word that developed <laughs> after I acquired uh, the English language, and my meaning of the word was very different from <laughs> the way it meant. I thank you for that for that compliment. Mm -hmm. Welcome. This next question: There appear to be many militant groups that were involved in the insurrection. Are they called? You'll have to answer that yourselves. Uh, as I tried to convey at the beginning, this is a really subjective term. Uh, you might say that it says as much about the user as about the organization that it's applied to. Um, most, if not all of the groups I've talked about have an element of religion in them, but it seems to me that some of these militias and some of these white supremacist groups display all of the most of the characteristics of of the popular meaning of the word cult also. Um, and they are fervently united and single minded and dedicated to their to their cause. And many of them are led by a not entirely straight and not entirely clear thinking uh, uh, individual. So. Um, Answer the question yourselves, but thanks for that question because it it's it's the kind of thinking that 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 we really need. Go ahead. Thanks, Bill. This last thing I'm seeing here is please talk about Stockholm syndrome. Say it again. Oh, Stockholm syndrome. You know, I hesitate to get into that for the same reason that early in my uh, in my talk I said that. The problem with the study of cults is that what we think we know about them was all described by outsiders. Uh, and um, 
the stock the phrase stockholm syndrome as you probably know refers to um the very common phenomenon of a a hostage uh, a uh, a captured uh, uh, person identifying with the ideology of the captor um we could say there's a lot of common sense in it uh um there is a complex psychology involved i think the case of patty hurst if you remember that one the the symbian east Li liberation army that she was joined or she had joined under coercion is a, is a good example of 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 this or at least that was her allegation later um but i really can't say more about it i'm reluctant to to offer because what I would offer would be opinion. I don't have uh, good solid data to talk about it. It simply seems to me as a survival mechanism and one that makes some sense. All right, thank you for that, Phil. Um, okay, let's see, this question here is, if they are destructive, how can their fervor be diminished? I'm sorry. Uh, your voice is saying right. if they are destructive, how can their fervor be diminished? If they are destructive, how can what be diminished? Their fervor. Oh, boy. I'm not prepared to answer that. I'm sorry. I. I, I if they are destructive, uh, I think that uh, very, very few or none of the groups that I mentioned were aiming to be destructive. They all believe firmly in their, their ideology, their theology. Remember, we're talking about God and Christ and the Bible in most cases. Um, I did not include any Muslim uh, uh, sects or cults. Uh, there are indeed uh, many I could have included here, but they these are people who are guided by uh, what they consider the truth with a capital T, and they regard themselves as embodiments of that truth and their actions as uh, stimulated by the uh, source of that truth. Uh, and. Uh, like uh, uh, Timothy McVeigh uh, said, uh, 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 there might be some collateral damage in the execution of of the 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 truth. Um, and so, uh, in the case of a group like uh, the People's Temple, um, who came to violence and the destruction of themselves. Um, late in their existence, but very quickly then, this is really complex and, uh, and uh, um, diminishing their fervor uh, uh, is kind of an afterthought, isn't it? Hmm. I've avoided the label suicide cult, although that has been applied to a couple. Um, uh, we think immediately of Masada, uh, in the uh, the first millennium of, of the modern era, right, uh, um, the uh, rebellious uh, uh, Jews who uh, who uh, sought refuge on, on the top of the hill uh, in Herod's uh, old uh, uh, country estate uh, on the uh, on Masada, the Romans found a way to get at them, and they all committed suicide rather than be captured, and they formed a model for this kind of a a group that commits suicide for a larger cause. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm not doing very well. Let's move on. Is there another question or shall we uh, close? Nope, there's another question which leads us right into your next presentation. So someone says, thank you. Is there a follow up lecture coming up? Yes, uh, Phil will be back on July 13th at 10 a.m. for the anthropology of conspiracy theories. Phil, do you want to give us a teaser for that? Well, uh, it is a follow-up, actually. This is a good introduction to that because uh, 
a number of these organizations are feared by outsiders uh, who ascribe a whole lot of attributes to them, uh, most of which I think are are separate from reality. Um, um, we will come back to, we will look at those evils that are embodied in classical witches and in modern, uh, the beliefs about modern satanic groups, including adherence to QAnon, uh, and we'll examine why do people believe in these things um, that form kind of an essence of, of conspiracy. And these beliefs are universal and seem to be found at all stages of human history. So there's something fundamentally human going on here. Uh, the idea of a conspiracy, of a secret um, subversive agency just outside of, of our uh, culture that is plotting to do harm to us or to subvert our social order. This is a universal belief and is found throughout history. So we'll look, we'll look at that. And thank you, is that enough of a teaser? <laughs> I think that's perfect. Anthropology so, has a lot to say about this about this uh, kind of uh, ideology. So that's what the title is: the, the the anthropology of conspiracy theories. Yes, July thirteenth at ten a.m. So we'll see everybody back here for that. And Phil, good, I thank hope so. You. Thank you. Thanks again to Katie. Thank you. Bye, everyone.